now what is angle of asymptote angle of asymptotes are the root locus branches which are approaches to infinity okay now first you just carefully observe the uh, definition angle of asymptote theta a angle of asymptotes are the root locus branches which are approaches to infinity now the question is why it is approaches to infinity now we are searching for zero right we are searching for zero now generally the root locus diagram ends at k equal to infinity and ends with open loop zero so this angle of asymptote the angle of asymptote is the direction which is showing that where the root locus branch is terminating okay the angle of asymptotes are the root locus branches which are approaches to infinity for easy language i am saying if the angle of asymptote is 30 degrees means if you go in 30 degrees direction definitely you will meet zero understand if the angle of asymptote is 45 degrees so if you go in 45 degrees direction you will meet zero because you are already started at pole and you will go and meet zero then the root locus diagram is called as a complete root locus branch right now what is the angle of asymptote now the angle of asymptote is nothing but 2q plus 1 the angle of asymptote formula is the angle of asymptote which is equal to 2q plus 1 into 180 degrees by np minus nj this is the angle of asymptote theta a 2q plus 1 into 180 degrees by np minus nj these are the angle of asymptote now where q is ranging from 0 1 2 and so on np minus nz np minus nz minus 1 np minus nz minus 1 now this is the angle of asymptote which is equal to 2q plus 1 into 180 degrees by np minus nz q equal to 0 1 2 3 and so on np minus nz minus 1 now let us check uh, we will take one small problem and the first problem now this is g of s g of s which is equal to k by s into s plus 2 into s plus 4 k by s into s plus 2 into s plus 4 now total number of poles np is the total number of poles how many are the total number of poles the total number of poles are 3 1 2 3 total number of zeros what is the total number of zeros there is no zero here nz is zero what is np minus nz np minus nz 3 minus 0 which is equal to 3 now what is the range of q q is 0 1 np minus nz minus 1 which means 3 minus 1 3 minus 1 is 2 now what is 3 minus 1 2 so q is 0 1 2 which means that now see here when q equal to 0 when q equal to 0 then what is the first angle of asymptote the first angle of asymptote is 2 into 0 plus 1 into 180 degrees by np minus nz is 3 and second angle of asymptote the second angle of asymptote theta a2 2, 2 into 1 plus 1 into 180 degrees by np minus nz is 3 and the third angle of asymptote 0 1 2 and the second angle of asymptote theta a 3 which is equal to 2 into 2 plus 1 into 180 degrees by np minus nz 2 into 2 into plus 1 into 180 degrees by np minus nz is 3 now see here now the first angle of asymptote 180 by 3 60 degrees now this is 3 3 cancel this is 180 degrees now this is uh, 3 60 into 5 this is 300 degrees these are the three angle of asymptotes these are the three angle of asymptotes now the question is the angle of asymptotes now see the angle of asymptotes 
the angle of asymptotes are the root locus branches the angle of asymptotes are the root locus branches which are approaches to infinity means 60 degrees direction if we go 60 degrees direction you will meet zero if you go 180 degrees direction you will meet zero if you go 300 degrees direction you will meet zero okay now these are the three angle of asymptotes total how many number of angle of asymptote one two three now see here this is the first angle of asymptote second angle of asymptote third angle of asymptote the total number of angle of asymptotes are the difference between poles and zeros what is the difference between poles and zeros the difference between poles and zeros is 3 so the total number of angle of asymptotes are the difference between poles and zeros now my question is the difference between poles and zeros are 3 therefore there are 3 angle of asymptotes if the difference between poles and zeros are 5 there are five angle of asymptotes if the difference between poles and zeros are 10 there are 10 angle of asymptotes okay now these are the angle of asymptotes now you understand what is angle of asymptote 60 degrees means if you go 60 degrees you will meet zero 180 degrees if you go 180 degrees you will meet zero if you go 300 degrees you will meet zero understand not these are the angle of asymptotes okay and this is the formula for that first you note down this okay now students then i am giving one important point here the total number of angle of asymptotes are the difference between poles and zeros okay now see here now the total number of angle of asymptotes are the difference between poles and zeros therefore the difference between poles and zeros are three therefore there are three angle of asymptotes now my question is whether 3 or 4 or 5 or 6 whatever it may be but what is the first angle of asymptote the first angle of asymptote formula is always the first angle of asymptote formula is nothing but q equal to 0 right q equal to 0 is the first angle of asymptote 180 degrees 180 degrees by np minus nz now 180 degrees by np minus nz is the first angle of asymptote formula for any problem for every problem the first angle of asymptote is 180 degrees by np minus nz now i am asking one question now for this particular problem what is the first angle of asymptote first angle of asymptote is 180 degrees don't see there you just again find here 180 degrees by np minus nz is 3 which is equal to 180 by 3 60 degrees into 1 which is equal to 60 degrees then there is no need to remember any other formula the second angle of asymptote which is nothing but first angle of asymptote multiplied with next odd number 3 which is equal to 180 degrees and the third angle of asymptote which is equal to same first angle of asymptote multiplied with next odd number 5 which is equal to 300 degrees we will get the same result or not 60 60 180 180 300 300 now this is a shortcut method don't use the formulas and all these things only first angle of asymptote is nothing but 180 degrees by np minus nz 
Now NP minus NZ is a difference between poles and zeros and find the first one Rest all remaining angle of asymptotes are the odd number of first angle of asymptotes But don't continue you know how many are the total number of angle of asymptotes 3 1 2 3 stop it Okay, if it is 4 1 2 3 4 stop it if it is 5 1 2 3 5 stop it understand or not so the total number of angle of asymptotes are three these are the three and that is general procedure and this is a shortcut procedure will give the same result or not yes now these are the angle of asymptotes in the shortest manner and that is the general procedure okay now note down this one also And one more thing also I want to say that now these are the angle of asymptotes okay there are three angle of asymptotes and angle of asymptotes are always symmetrical angle of asymptotes are always symmetrical angle of asymptotes are always symmetrical now check what is the first angle of asymptote 60 degrees this is 0 degrees this is 90 degrees now exactly middle is 45 degrees but this is 60 degrees so greater than 45 and less than 90 degrees now this is the first angle of asymptote then students i am saying if you have one angle of asymptote don't see the second angle of asymptote draw the symmetrical angle angle of asymptotes are always symmetrical about the real axis this is theta 1 which is nothing but 60 degrees this is theta a1 which is nothing but 60 degrees you immediately write the symmetrical angle don't see any angle is existing or not this is a symmetrical angle this is another angle of asymptote which is nothing but minus 60 degrees it is existing okay you don't check it is definitely existing and another angle of asymptote now in a easy language i am saying 0 to 180 degrees now if any angle is existing between 0 to 180 degrees take all the symmetrical angles if it is 45 degrees minus 45 minus 35 degrees plus 35 plus 100 degrees minus 100 60 minus 60 180 minus 180 like that so all the angles you can again take the second angle now if one angle is existing take the corresponding second angle which is symmetrical angle for that now 180 degrees this is the 180 degrees now this is 180 degrees which means that sir minus 180 degrees this is the same minus 180 degrees and plus 180 degrees both are same that's what i am saying angle of asymptotes are always symmetrical and you have a doubt sir 60 is existing sir okay this is existing sir 180 is also existing sir but where is minus 360 sir minus 60 is not existing sir only 300 is existing so you just subtract the angle with you just subtract that angle with 360 degrees then you can get the angle okay now this is 300 okay this is the 300 minus 360 degrees right 300 minus 360 degrees is nothing but minus 60 degrees no no sir i want to see that is 300 or not 0 90 180 this is what is this this is 270 this is 360 greater than 270 degrees and less than 360 degrees greater than 270 degrees less than 360 degrees any angle if it is greater than 270 degrees and less than 360 degrees now that angle is nothing but 300 degrees which is a minus 60 degrees which is matching or not that's what i am saying you just do only one step blindly angle of asymptotes are always symmetrical 40 minus 40 30 minus 30 180 minus 180 60 minus 60 135 minus 35 okay angle of asymptotes are always symmetrical this is very 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 important point okay now angle of asymptotes are always are always symmetrical 
angle of asymptotes are always symmetrical with respect to real axis angle of asymptotes are always symmetrical with respect to real axis because the poles and zeros are always symmetrical about the real axis okay so this is the angle of asymptotes are always symmetrical now there is another question where you start the angle of asymptote who says that you want to start here and i can start here i may start here i may be started here now where i want to start the angle of asymptote the intersection point the intersection point of angle of asymptotes the intersection point of angle of asymptotes is called as centeroid the intersection point of angle of asymptotes is called as centeroid represented by sigma this is called as centeroid sigma the intersection point of the intersection point the intersection point the intersection point of angle of asymptotes on the real axis now that particular point is called as centroid now students what we have to do it no you don't calculate angle of asymptote first you calculate first centroid and after that you want to do the angle of asymptote okay for uh, getting the understanding of that particular definition first i am doing this but next problems you first find centroid and angle of asymptote because after angle of asymptotion calculations completed where you start that starting point or that intersection point of angle of asymptotes is nothing but the centroid now we will see how to find the centroid okay first you just verify this now you can understand now if you go in this particular direction definitely will meet zero if you go in this particular direction you will meet zero if you go in this particular direction you will meet zero angle of asymptotes are the directions where the root locus branches are moving in this particular direction you will meet zero and the root locus diagram terminates at open loop zero okay note on this okay now these are the angle of asymptotes is always symmetrical and the total number of angle of asymptotes are the difference between poles and zeros now centroid sigma what is centroid sigma the centroid sigma is the intersection point of angle of asymptotes on the real axis the centroid sigma is nothing but sum sum of the real part sum addition sum of real parts why real part because this intersection point is on the real axis sum of real parts of poles open loop poles minus sum addition sum of real parts sum of real parts of open loop open loop zeros sum of real parts of open loop poles minus sum of real parts of open loop zeros by np minus nz the real part we are considering because the 
intersection point is on the real axis therefore there is no need to consider the imaginary part what is the centroid for this particular problem the centroid is sum of the real parts 0 minus 2 minus 4 minus sum of the real parts of 0 by np minus nz np minus nz is 3 therefore minus 6 by 3 which is equal to minus 2 now the centroid sigma which is nothing but minus 2. so all these particular angle of asymptote you should be started at s uh, at s equal minus 3 at sigma equal minus 3 is the centroid okay so now this particular rules and regulations are sufficient such that you can at least draw the root locus diagram are already options are available you may easily say that sir, this diagram is wrong sir this diagram is correct sir you can say with this particular rules okay so with this particular rules whatever we studied so far based on that we will try to draw the root locus diagram for this particular problem okay now we'll start drawing the we'll try start drawing the root locus diagram for the same problem Now this is a plane. Identify the poles and zeros on S plane. Locate the poles and zeros on S plane and identify the root locus branches first. Now one pole is at origin. One pole is at minus two. And one pole is at minus four. This is the root locus branch. Now there is no root locus branch because even number. This entire real axis is a root locus branch. Now centroid sigma. What is the centroid sigma? Just now we are calculating for this particular problem. The centroid sigma which is this is the intersection point. Yes, this is the intersection point. Now this is the centroid sigma which is the intersection point now from here angle of asymptote what is the first angle of asymptote you are already calculated angle of asymptote now the first angle of asymptote is 60 degrees this is first angle of asymptote and second angle of asymptote is 180 degrees second angle of asymptote is 180 degrees and third angle of asymptote and the third angle of asymptote which is 300 degrees i don't see all these things angle of asymptotes are always symmetrical you just draw the symmetrical angle that's it okay this is another angle of asymptote 300 degrees or minus 60 degrees angle of asymptotes are always symmetrical and now see the root locus diagram very very important okay concentrate the root locus diagram starts with k equal to 0 the root locus diagram starts with k equal to 0. The root locus diagram starts with open loop pole. The root locus diagram starts with open loop pole. As k is changing, as k is changing, closed loop pole is moving. As k is changing, closed loop pole is moving. These two closed loop poles are meet at a particular point. That particular point is called as break away point now this is the point now the root locus branches leaves the real axis with what angle the root locus branches leaves the real axis now with what angle the root locus branches leaves the real axis now the root locus branches leaves the real axis at an angle of plus or minus 180 degrees by n which is equal to plus or minus 180 degrees by n is nothing but number of poles or number of zeros at this particular break point at that particular break point how many number of poles or how many number of zeros are existing at this particular break point there are total two poles 180 degrees by 2 which is equal to plus or minus 90 degrees what is the meaning of that so you leave with plus or minus 90 degrees first so we leave with plus or minus 90 degrees now this is plus 90 degrees 
and this is minus 90 degrees now k is changing closed loop pole is moving closed loop pole is moving now we don't know where should we go nobody is there now i am living so after living now is there any person is showing the direction if you go in this particular direction you will meet zero there there is angle of asymptote now as k is changing closed loop pole is moving in this direction because that direction is given by angle of asymptote as k is changing closed loop pole is moving 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 the root locus diagram terminates with k equal to infinity the root locus diagram terminates with open loop zero if you go infinity direction uh, now definitely will go get one open loop zero now see here the root locus diagram starts with open loop pole and ends with open loop zero then this is called as one complete root locus branch understand not starts with open loop pole and ends with open loop zero this is one complete root locus branch now this is one complete root locus branch first next now that fellow is living with minus 90 degrees and where it will go is there any person is showing the direction as k is changing 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 closed loop pole is moving now this closed loop pole is moving in this this particular direction because that direction is given by angle of asymptote as k is changing closed loop pole is moving 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 and it will meet one zero in this particular direction because this is the direction which is approaches to infinity now the root locus diagram terminates with open loop zero terminates with k equal to infinity the root locus diagram starts with pole and ends with zero starts with pole and ends with zero start with pole and ends with zero this is another complete root locus branches okay now started pole and set zero started pole and set zero this is another complete root locus branch now see here now there is no root locus branch here students there is no root locus branch okay there is no root locus branch therefore now there is no movement there is no root locus branch there is no movement now see here as now there is a root locus branch here there is a movement of closed loop pole am i not now the root locus diagram starts with k equal to zero the root locus diagram starts with open loop pole as k is changing closed loop pole is moving 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 as k is changing closed loop pole is moving 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 and the root locus diagram and the root locus diagram terminates with now see here the root locus diagram because this is one angle of asymptote is a showing the direction which are approaches to infinity the root locus diagram terminates with k equal to infinity and terminates with open loop zero terminates with k equal to infinity terminates with open loop zero starts at poles ends at zero this is another complete root locus branch complete root locus branch is a branch this is the complete root locus branch this is the second complete root locus branch and this is the third complete root locus branch what is a complete root locus branch a complete root locus branch is a branch where it starts at poles and ends at zero now see now what are the doubts here here we have some doubts what is this breakaway point what is the value of that but breakaway point that we will see but what i am saying earlier there exist two adjacently placed poles between them there is a root locus branch definitely there is a chance of existing one breakaway point now in the same situation is will be demanding here or not yes and you see that the root locus diagram is always symmetrical about the real axis the root locus diagram is always symmetrical with respect to the real axis if it is any unsymmetricity with respect to the real axis that is not the correct option okay you always choose the option with respect to the real axis any root locus diagram it should be always symmetrical because with respect to real axis the angle of asymptotes are symmetrical root locus diagram is always symmetrical understand or not now this is the root locus diagram for this particular problem right i am drawing with the rules and regulation but students without that then i will give one simple shortest way to you you have to be remember these three points 
then there is no need of drawing the root locus diagram if the options are available now one point i want to say if if np greater than nz if np greater than nz means practical transfer function if np greater than nz which means that practical transfer function if np greater than nz now the practical transfer function if np greater than nz now the practical transfer function is first point first point total number of total number of complete root locus branches the total number of complete complete root locus branches are the total number of complete root locus branches are np the total number of complete root locus branches are np second point and the second point is number of number of root locus branches number of root locus branches terminates terminates at infinity is np minus nz number of root locus branches terminates at infinity is np minus nz and the third point is number of root locus branches number of root locus branches terminates terminates at zero is nz terminates at zero is nz now based on this this is a practical transfer function or not three poles no zeros okay three poles no zeros this is the practical transfer function now this is uh, existing if the practical transfer function the total number of complete root locus branches are np what is np 1 2 3 therefore np equal to 3 now number of root locus branches terminates at infinity 3 minus 0 is 3 number of root locus branches terminates at 0 there is no zero here nz is zero now this is correct or not you will verify how many are the complete root locus branches by identifying from the transfer function 3 1 2 1 2 3 the total number of complete root locus branches are 3 1 2 3 is it matching or not is correct complete root locus branches starts at pole and set zero starts at pole and set zero starts at pole and set zero next how many branches terminates at infinity 3 infinity terminating at infinity this is terminating at infinity 1 2 3 so don't say this is zero this is the zero which is available at infinity now but this is the zero in the transfer function but these zeros are not visible but it is existing at infinity place okay so that is why the total number of branches terminating at infinity is one branch is infinity side terminated second branch third branch so this is also correct now is there any branch terminating at zeros is there any branch terminating at zeros is there any zero existing in the transfer function there is no zero in the transfer function therefore there is no branch is terminating at that particular let us take for example here s plus 1 One zero is at minus one. If zero is existing, definitely at that particular zero, one branch is terminating. How many zeros? That that many number of branches are terminating at that particular zeros. Okay, but in this problem there is no zero, therefore no branch is terminating. What is there any advantages of all these three points? Yes, because if the options are available, the given transfer function four options in the uh, four root locus diagrams in the four options. Then first you check this. how many branches total complete 3 but in option only two branches wrong in option only one branches wrong in option only four branches wrong in option there is three branches there is a chance of correct and how many branches terminating at infinity 3 in option only one branch is terminating at infinity wrong option in option 2 two branches terminating wrong in option 3 three branches terminating there may be a chance of 
correct okay like that you can uh, analyze and you can get the answer without drawing the root locus diagram without remembering all the rules and regulations of the root locus diagram drawing understand or not now this is the uh, way to draw the root locus diagram n number of problems same procedure okay but we have some doubts in this particular problem we will solve all the particular doubts okay first you do, just note down this okay this is the root locus diagram now uh, what is breakaway point all these things we will see now before that then in this particular problem see here in this particular problem these are very very important points okay now in this particular problem i just now this is the open loop trans function g of s which is equal to k by s into s plus 2 into s plus 4 same problem now i just add 1 0 i just add 1 0 okay same problem i just add 1 0 then what happen now we'll see first so first we'll see what is np total number of poles are 3 total number of zeros are 1 np minus nz which is equal to 3 minus 1 which is equal to 2 right so complete root locus branches are 3 complete root locus branches are 3 one branch is terminate how many branches terminating at infinity at infinity there are two branches terminating now how many branches terminating at 0 one branch okay one branch is terminating at 0 okay in a short me method okay. anyway we'll do the procedure as per procedure So, one pole is at origin, one zero is at minus one, one zero, one pole is at minus two, and one pole is at minus four. Identify the root locus branches first. This is the root locus branch, no root locus branch, and there is a root locus branch here, and no root locus branch. Okay. Now, what is the angle of asymptote total? How many angle of asymptote? Two. What is the first angle of asymptote? 180 degrees by NP minus NZ, two, which is equal to 90 degrees. What is the second angle of asymptote? Don't do anything. The second angle of asymptote is the first angle of asymptote multiplied with the next odd number, which is equal to 270 degrees. Total number of complete root locus branches NP equal to 3. Complete root locus branches. Now NP minus NZ, which is equal to 3 minus 1, which is equal to terminates at infinity. And how many branches terminates at 0? NZ, NZ is only 1. So this is the first angle of asymptote theta degrees, and this is the second angle of asymptote because totally two angle of asymptotes. Okay. Now centroid sigma 
the centroid sigma which is nothing but sum of the real parts of poles 0 minus 2 minus 4 minus sum of the real parts of zeros minus 1 by np minus nz is 2 minus 6 plus 1 minus 5 by 2 which is equal to minus 2.5 minus 6 plus 1 minus 5 by 2 minus 2.5 is a centroid sigma now centroid sigma is minus 2.5 this is centroid sigma is minus 2.5 uh, from here what is the first angle of asymptote the first angle of asymptote is 90 degrees and second angle of asymptote don't see minus 90 degrees you write directly because angle of asymptotes are always symmetrical symmetrical about the real axis therefore now as root locus diagram starts with k equal to 0 the root locus diagram starts with open loop pole as k is changing closed loop pole is moving 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 and the root locus diagram terminates with k equal to infinity the root locus diagram terminates with open loop 0 now the root locus diagram starts with k equal to 0 the root locus diagram starts with k equal to 0. Now the k equal to 0. There exist two adjacently placed poles. Between them there is a root locus branch. Definitely there exists one break away point. As k is changing, closed loop pole is moving, moving, moving. As k is changing, closed loop pole is moving, 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 moving. And these two closed loop poles are meet at a particular point. That particular point is called as break away point. After breakaway, it will leave the real axis with an angle of, with an angle of plus or minus 180 degrees by N, which is nothing but plus or minus, plus or minus 180 degrees by N is number of poles or zeros are 2, therefore, which is equal to plus or minus 90 degrees, plus or minus 90 degrees. Therefore, as K is changing, closed loop pole is moving. As K is changing, closed loop pole is moving. In which direction? Plus 90 degrees. Leaving. And after that, where it will follow? It will follow the angle of asymptote. So, in this direction, if you meet, the root locus diagram terminates with K equal to infinity, terminates with open loop 0. Now, as the root locus branch is leaving, 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 and it will go in this direction as k is changing closed loop pole is moving now the root locus diagram terminates with open loop 0 when k equal to infinity the root locus branch terminates with k equal to infinity open loop 0 start set poles end set 0 start set poles end set 0 now see total how many complete root locus branches this is 1 this is 2 and this is 3 Complete root locus branches are 3. How many branches terminates at infinity? 1, 2. How many? 2. How many branches terminates at 0? At 0, how many branches terminating? At 0, only one branch is terminating. At this particular 0, only one branch is terminating. Is matching or not? Now, that is not the important point here. Now, without finding the breakpoint or all these things I am saying, and one important point, by adding a finite 0, by adding a finite zero what happened by adding a finite zero now the branches on the right hand side now this branches is on right hand side is completely shifted to the branches on right hand side is completely shifted to left hand side such that the system stability is improved or not here is in the danger zone but by adding a zero then the danger zone is completely will become safe zone okay so the effect of adding a zero which will improve the system stability and the poles are completely moved towards the left hand side system stability is improved okay this is a very very important point now this is the way to draw the root locus diagram without knowing a uh, uh, total rules and regulation with a small rules and regulation with a few rules and regulations i will try to draw the root locus diagram which will give the correct answer okay then we will see what is breakaway point how to calculate what is the procedure and everything also we will see okay now first you just take down this